Can the military save Pookie or Ray Ray? Ladies and gentlemen, I post this question to you because uh, I've been thinking a lot lately. You see, I used to, I used to be a Pookie or Ray Ray, not by choice though. My mom, she, um, we moved around a lot, and she used my college money, the money I was using to go to college. She, um, she took it from me. We stopped from going to school, and and they used to say, uh. It, uh, it it really put a detriment in my life. So it's had me lying around at home, becoming, you know, a, a nobody. I wasn't slinging dope or anything, but I was just literally lying on my bed, waking up, eating, and going to sleep. I guess I became a low-class hooky. <laughs> but uh, one day I woke up and I saw I changed that, started working out starting and finding ways I better my life. I ended up joining the Marine Corps, served five years, and I, I came out the other end a lot better. That discipline changed me. And now I was self-sustaining, and mom could no longer pull, hold me back. And I, I bring this up now because, um, uh, if you follow G. Lowry, big shout out to G. Lowry for thank you for encouraging me making this channel, man. Um, if you follow him, you probably uh, you probably heard him reading one of my comments in his last video. Uh, my other account is called Dark Pro One, so that's what he called me by in that in that video. And he um he speaks on uh, how he was in the army himself, so it got me thinking. He was in the hood and he joined the military. I was in the hood. I joined the military. And we both fight out. So could the military help people, whether they're educated, lame, or pookie, or ray-ray? Can they help them escape? And I, I, I gear this toward those pookie and ray-rays is because they have the more hood mentality that keeps them stuck there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to say that yes, the military can't help pookie and ray-ray. I say this is because i seen people in my recruiter's office who was Pookie and Ray Ray's, and it helped them. It helps the on Quishas and stuff, too. You don't believe me? Um, my recruiter's office had a single mother there. Um, she had a son. He was, looked like he'd been about four or five years old. When she wasn't taking care of him, uh, from whatever thing she was doing most of the day, she would come to the recruiter's office. She would work out with us, do those push-ups, those sit-ups. She would work out, do what she can, and, you know, get herself set up to be able to join the military. Now, I noticed some skepticism in the hood about the military. People saying, I don't want to join the white man's army. Or pookies, or the hood rats saying, man, I ain't going to join the military. I'll just go to the stands and get shot. Now, we know, we both know that... <laughs> That is some ignorant kind of stuff. That's some real ignorant bull crap you gonna say about the military. Cause, first of all, if you're in the hood, you hear gunshots every single day. There ain't a single night in the hood where I didn't hear gunshots or police irons going off. And I mean that. So, if you're in the hood, you have far greater chance of getting shot, robbed, stabbed, what have you, than you do in the military. Secondly, not all jobs in the military have you overseas in the sands. In fact, uh, my job, I was 3451, comptroller. A marine was a comptroller. If you know what a comptroller is, that's a, that's a basically an accountant. So, yeah, I was a hard knocking marine and everything. But, I was behind the computer all my Marine Corps time. I went straight from boot camp at MCT to my schoolhouse, and boom. I did some intel work on the side, but other than that, I was a comptroller. Now, I will tell you right now, 98% of people that join the military, well, 98% of those MOSs are geared toward you sitting in the office, especially if you join one of the other branches. Speaking of joining, I want to tell you how to do it. It's really easy. It's not hard. 
you know, when I was starting up, I, I was a little scared, but trust me, it's really easy. Now, first of all, you have to be 17 or 18. And if you're 17, you got to have a parent's consent. But you're still in high school at that point, so don't worry about it too much. When you're 18, you don't need a parent. You can literally walk straight into any recruiter's office. Now, for those of you that switch and join, you have options. For active duty, I want to focus on that. You have to uh, be at least 18, um, but you have up to the age of certain certain ages to join. For the Coast Guard, the age limit is 27, Marine Corps is 28, Navy is 34, Army is 35, and Air Force is 39. So that means worst case scenario, if you want to be in the military, you have until the age 39 to decide. I highly recommend you start younger because the younger you are, the more fit you are, and easier it is to join. But um, it's pretty easy to join. I was 22 when I joined. Um, yeah, I, I didn't join straight out of high school, and I wish I did because then I could have, uh, I could have gotten a little. I wouldn't have had to suffer being in the hood as long as I did. But join young if you can. And I'm, I'm mainly speaking to you Pookies and Ray Rays that are in your mid-20s that, you know, where you're, you already caught up in the game. You maybe have to sling some dope or you're just lazy. Things not going your way in life. But you want to change it. You look and change it. Well, I'll tell you the first thing you can do. First, decide which branch you want to join. This way you can dream a little bit. You know, fantasize. Because I feel that that's what really encouraged me to join. Being that nice suit doing what I wanted to do, my MOS or job. For uh for those that want to fight, that actually want to go over to the sands, I recommend joining the Marine Corps. It is the most combat orientated one. Uh you know, every Marine's a rifleman, they'll tell you that. And you can literally be that MOS if you want to. A rifleman. You will go out and you'll be shooting, I guarantee it. So if you want to go over to Iraq and you want to fight terrorism or whatever enemy you may be fighting in the future. I highly recommend you join the Marine Corps. If you won't want to, if you don't want to go to the Sands, you can still join the Marine Corps. But if you want to just have a job, a really good job that pays really well, I recommend you join any of the other branches, especially the Air Force. They're the most uh, mind oriented ones. Uh, they, uh, most of all their MOSs have you, mostly, or most of them have you thinking for your brain doing intel work or logistics, things that we are on the computer or, you know, that basically most things on 90% of the stuff you're on the computer or you, you just hammering things with your hand. Basically, you won't be shooting a, a rifle or any other weapon in the Air Force. Same for the Army and the Navy. Marine Corps too. Like I said, I was in the Marine. I was a Marine, and I've been behind a computer. But if I could have done it all over again, um, I would have joined the Air Force or the Army, seeing as my MOS was not combat related. But uh, point is, um, decide which branch you want to join. Call next step is step two. Call up the recruiter. Uh, you can find your number in your office by simply Googling them. Now, I, I lived an hour away from my computer. Oh, sorry, my, my, my recruiter. <laughs> I lived an hour away from my recruiter, and he still came out to see me every once in a while. It was tough. But he came out to see me just to see how strong I was getting. Um, eventually, I moved to the hood, and I had got a new recruiter. Because my mom, she thought to move back to the hood. And that was the worst part of my life. I was in a shelter in the projects. If I, I was in a shelter in the projects, if that's some motivation for you guys, that right there. The, I, I was living in a shelter in the projects, and I had to walk out of the projects a few blocks to um to my crew's office. Um, and I literally was living off a uh, subway. Um, there's some subway I managed to scrounge up while I was there. Sometime my recruiter would give me a little bit of money if I did something, helped him out. He would help me get so I could feed myself, so I could get strength to work out with everyone else. I worked my butt off to join the Marine Corps. So if I could do that, I'm pretty certain you Pookie and Ray Ray's that are in the projects in the hood, living out there, you bonquish with single mothers, 
If I could do that, living in a shelter, no money to my name, and join the hardest branch to join, I'm pretty certain you guys can do it. Any other branch, whatever. There was a single mother in my recruiter's office that did it. Two, in fact. One of them was, I think, 25, and the other one was straight out of high school. She became pregnant and had a son. She managed to join the Marine Corps. A single mother. There is no excuse to not join the Marine Corps or any military, that is. There's no excuse. Third thing, and it's the hard step, and it's after you come in that recruit office, he's gonna ask you, um, do you do drugs? Now, if you're doing drugs, well, if, I'll be honest, if you're doing drugs, you're probably not listening to this video too well. But if you're doing drugs, stop. And I, and I mean any kind of drugs. The hardest drug for you to kick is going to be weed. Weed, hash, Mary Jane, whatever you want to call it. Now, you could smoke. Cigarettes ain't a problem. You could drink. Heck, I know the <laughs> military people, we encourage drinking because we like party. Work hard, party hard. But weed is no, no. Um, and they might legalize that future in the military. I could kind of see it because weed is slowly becoming legal. Well, right now, weed is a big no-no in the military. And I know that's hard for some of you because you need weed to calm down, to escape. Trust me, you have great, great ways to calm down when you're in the military. I did five years in the Marine Corps. Now, I've never done drugs or smoked weed or anything, and I never have, but I know people that have been in there, and that was tough for them. You know, but when you're in the military, you make a lot of money. You make so much money, and you're doing so many great things that you don't need that escape to calm down for weed anymore. You don't. <laughs> you will not miss it, I guarantee you. And if you, if you think you might miss it, well, I have good news. The second you get out the military, you could do it. I knew a guy that got his, um, <laughs> I knew a guy that got his DD-214. He was walking out the office. He said goodbye to everyone. His boy pulled up in the car. Car with full smoke. Pass him a blunt. Flashed the two, DD-214 and he drove off. This guy was in uniform. Left, <laughs> left the office with a blunt in his hand. Now he wasn't going. I don't think he was going to go go back to the hood or anything like that. Most people that join the military, they don't go back to the hood or the ghetto they came from because you know they worked hard to get out of it. They ain't gonna just return to it. I've seen people do it, but ninety percent of them don't. So if you really for want to continue smoking weed, just serve your four years that go by real fast, get money, get paid, get a good career, and get out. Speaking of career, you wonder what kind of jobs you can get. Like I said, I was a 3051 controller. I never had to go overseas to shoot. If you wanna, if you want to, um, if you wanna get a good job, uh, all you have to do is pass a little, little test. I like to call and what the military calls is that's bad. All branches got to take this. Now, your score determines which kind of job you get. And the ASVAB is basically a test that uh, pretty much some, you know, basic um, stuff you learned in high school and whatnot. Starts off easy, gets hard, deep, you go into it. And honestly, it's tough. It's really tough. Well, now, when I say it's tough, I don't mean it's tough to pass. <laughs> honestly, it's really easy to pass. It's just, uh, strangely, the questions seem tough. Let me put it this way. So, when I was taking ASVAB, I, I, I was sure I failed. Uh, I've been out of high school for four years. I uh, didn't study for it. I didn't even know it was taken at that time. And I was I was 22 years old. Been out of high school for a while. Couldn't remember anything past freshman year. Somehow, I got a 76 on the ASVAB. This was back when the passing grade was 30. My recruiter didn't expect me to pass. And I got a 76. You know what my recruiter told me? With that score, I could get any job I want in the military. Any job! 
Originally, he was going to have me become a supply clerk or something like that. You know, work a supply or something like that. Because he didn't expect me to pass. And if I was passed, I would have been low score. You know, black kid coming out of the hood out of high school for a while. He's seen a lot of people like me. And you know, I'll be honest, uh, you know, a lot of people that come out of the hood, be a Pookie or a Ray Ray, to enjoy the military, they ain't the smartest dude. So most of them don't really get the high scores. Though, strangely enough, there's, all, there's some of them do. I just happen to do that. I don't know how. I think I got lucky. But my point is, is uh, most people, if you want to know, most people average around 50s and 60s. They ain't that smart. And I was I was less than average on the, as a smart people. Everyone that recruits off said I just got hell lucky. But by golly, you know what they did? My recruiter set me up with an Intel contract. I just stay Intel, but whoo-wee. Let me, let me just tell you right now. I'm so happy I got the score I did. I literally had a bucket list of jobs to choose from. You know how good that feels when you could decide which career path you want to do? Needs to say, uh, the ASVAB is not too hard. If you're worried about tests, because test anxiety from being in high school, don't worry. It's, it's stupid easy. Worst case scenario, you get a low score, but you still be able to serve. You don't have to shoot a, a rifle. Trust me. But, um, so... I'm just going to reiterate some of the things I went over, how to join, just focus on them real quick. First, you need to go see a recruiter. Second, you're going to have to uh, quit any major drugs you've been doing or weed. I and mean, you have to quit immediately when you walk into that office. you got time. you got time because right before you go to boot camp, they do this. They take it to the um to the MEPS. That's where you go to the ASVAB, by the way. They take you to the MEPS. And they will um, do some kind of test, you know, see how flexible you are, um, stick their thumb up your bum. <laughs> they will, they will uh, do some tests. And one of the things that they will ask you is if you ever smoke weed or do any drugs. Now, um, I'll, not, I'll let your recruiter explain that one to you because that's a little, a little interesting uh, stuff about that. But uh, now, uh, I, I can't remember if you do a urinalysis while you're there, but I do know you do one when you when you get to boot camp. So if you do any weed, you'll be kicked out real quick. Trust me, they detect that. Um, but if you could, if you know you could kick that drug for a little bit, and you know you pass that ass fab, you're in. Now it may seem like a lot of hoops, but trust me, your recruiter will work with you. He will not abandon you. These are fine young men and women of the military. They been where you're at. They will work hard. Most people in the military they usually come from poor backgrounds. Before not, they don't come from rich daddy living up in a in a Poconos or whatever. They they come from poor backgrounds. My own recruiter, he came from the hood too. He was from I think he said he was from some hood in South Carolina, something like that. No, he came from the hood too. Or for hood, probably more off than mine. He is, you know, um, my uncles uh, been out and been in jail. One of them died from AIDS. I was a pookie myself, cause my mama, you know, she used up my college money and stuff. And she even after I was trying to join, she was thinking it was a phase. I remember one time she was telling me I ain't gonna be nothing. I ain't gonna join no military. I gotta stop playing, stop doing this phase I'm going through. She didn't believe me. She kept discouraging me. I hurt. I mean, sure enough, when I was getting on the bus and everything, she's proud. But I kid you not, it's a week before, uh, all the way up to a week before I left, she kept discouraging me, thinking it was some kind of phase, because she was yelling at me at the time, calling me a good for nothing bum and all this other stuff, a fat whale. <laughs> Being in the hood, you have people discouraging like that all the time. Don't listen to that. You let already touch upon this, this in this video. Don't listen to those people that discourage you from bettering yourself because they're, they're just crabs trying to keep you down and if people literally force you down because you live in your house like I was living in my mom's house you know what will get you out the military I kid you not I have recruiters go up and kick down doors getting their little pulley out of the hood I know my recruiter he told me one time some some girl was trying to join. She was a single mom. She wanted to do better for her little boy. So you know he did. He went to her house. He literally went to her house up in the projects, which I came to find out later was the same project um shelter I was living in. 
he came in, knocked on her door, took that little girl out of that home, put her in the office, and had her fill out more paperwork and go to MAPS that day, because her parents were trying to keep her from doing the next step. The main major steps you have to do when you join the military is you have to go to MAPS and everything after the ASVAB. After you do that, and you they, they question you, you ask if you did drugs and that, after you do that, all you're doing is literally waiting to the uh, the plane come your plane arrives to go to book camp for me after i did that part it was i think it was literally like one week i left before i had to go on that plane and that was the week my mom changed my mind she realized it was serious that's how most parents actually act they know it's serious once you got that boot camp thing once you got that confirmed date set in when you're leaving the boot camp that's when it's i mean it's always serious don't get me wrong but that is when that is when everyone knows that you ain't just some guy that's pulley or anything like that. That went to maps. That's when everyone knows that you are ready. Because when you're a pulley, you're preparing. But when that week comes, that's when you feel that little pit in your stomach. And you're like, man, this is it. My life is beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to share that with you. And I know you didn't notice about me before, but yeah. Coming from a a Pookie or Ray Ray in the projects to a, a Marine veteran going to college using his post 11 GI Bill is awesome. Now, uh, I went from being a good for nothing to a guy with a beautiful wife to a sec his second daughter in college. And by the way, I'm not sure if you know, but uh, you get free health and dental when in the military. It's kind of nice, trust me, really kind of nice. Um, and being in the military puts you in a really good career, right? and if you want to get laid, I guarantee you, if a woman or a guy finds out you're in the military, they'll want to slam you all the time. And even overseas, I was in Japan, them Japanese girls love some Marines, I tell you what, mm, they love military guys out there. <laughs> When I came back to the States, my wife, uh, had, I'm not sure if she uh, liked me for being in the military, but, uh, you know, she uh, she definitely likes to brag, uh, you know, that her husband was a Marine. When I was in, she loved to brag about that. And you got to feel proud. You feel so much pride. People admire you. It's way better than being some gangbanger street. That hood respect, that's crap. That is a bull crap that little pookie ray ray gang banger crap yeah you're going to parties you have your pants sagging all that stuff think about it you know respect yourself be honest with yourself it seems cool but be honest you don't respect yourself you don't but when you join the military no matter which branch you dress in those nice uniforms you got money you got a car you feel amazing there's no better feeling like that. And you may ask, why did I get out if I have that feeling? It's because when, cause the military teaches you discipline. It teaches you how to be better. So you want to you wanna go to the next level. So that's what I did. I got out and I said, you know what? I like being in the military so much that I want to get out. And I'm going to change the world in ways that the military showed me how by using discipline and setting goals. So what I did is I got out and now I'm college. I'm going to college to to um you know be learn learn accounting. Gonna get my CPA, gonna get my J D in law school and I'm going to yeah it's gonna be years of school. It's gonna be hard. Hey, it's so freaking hard. I I'm it's middle of finals week for me right now. It's hard. But I've been through harder <laughs> I've, some, I've been to some tough times in the military. It's not all games and play time. Don't get me wrong. We play hard because we work hard. You work hard, you play hard. So, I take that mentality and put it to schoolwork. And it's, <laughs> it's honestly, it's a breeze. And it ain't always a breeze. It's hard on both ends being civilian or military. But I'll tell you what, whatever path you go, whether you're staying in or you get out, you take that with you. It's the same we got. Once a Marine, always a Marine. You no know, matter which branch you join, Marine Corps, Navy, Army, Air Force, Coast Guard, National Guard, whatever, join the military if you're a Pookie or Ray Ray. 
if you don't consider yourself pookie or whatever, if you were, you're going to become one like I was or I did. A lot of people come from bad places in the military. If you if you're wondering, if you're even just slightly curious, do yourself a favor. Just walk into the office. Walk in there. You don't have to have attention to join. Just walk in the recruiter's office. If you don't have a good job, if you're tired of working at McDonald's, tired of working at Kmart, Walmart, Subway, you want to get more than just a minimum wage job, entry level job, join the military. And if you wonder how much they pay you, they pay you seven. Let me see. Uh, starting out, you get paid only about five to seven hundred dollars, I believe, somewhere around in that ballpark. Which doesn't sound a lot. I know that's about minimum wage, maybe less. But hear me out. They pay for your housing and your medical, dental, all that. They pay for everything, everything. They even give you clothes on your back. So you save way more money than you're making, and you get promoted fast. <laughs> I went. I started out making about five, six hundred dollars. I left the Marine Corps as only an E3, a Lance Corporal. No, actually, I left as a corporal, but this uh, most of it was Lance Corporal. I left, and I came out making one thousand eight hundred every two weeks. For those of you who want to add it up, that's three thousand six hundred a month. So if you want to really count your money, say um, when you live in paycheck to paycheck, I'll put it in perspective for you. I mean, I'll just do the math and give you an estimate. That's about eight to nine hundred something dollars a week. That's not bad, right? That's about a hundred something dollars a day. Actually, I think that's about. Yeah, for you. So if that was like a nine to five job, that would be about two hundred dollars a day, with benefits and all of that. So, I had free housing, clothes on my back, making a lot of money. And then, I, not to mention, I was saving. Money. I was putting ten percent of every money I got into a retirement plan. If you that, that retirement plan literally puts it in a um, it's a kind of like a, it's like this account for their savings plan and basically it's the best kind of plan you can get because by time when it's if you set it up you can literally set it up where if you just put about 10 percent in every single every single week you get paid you you will be a millionaire by the time you're 40 and a billionaire sometime in your 50s i kid you not i'm not I kid you not i did the math and they do they show you this in boot camp you put just 10% and I see 10% may be a, seem like a lot, but trust me, you ain't gonna miss it to take you out, but take, take the money out for you, um, before you, uh, you know, you, uh, you actually see it. And you become a billionaire. You can become a billionaire by the time your mom and pop's age. Ain't that something? Now, obviously, I got out, so I only, I only end up making about 12, 11, 12 thousand dollars, but. You know how kind of nice it is to be able to get out and make twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> I was able to use that twelve thousand dollars to pay off my car and move my wife and you know my wife over to a nice new apartment. You know, before I would have you know if I didn't I saved the money. I was able to have more enough money to give us a nice little place and a nice comfortable place near the college. Still have it. Still living there right now. Pretty nice. Very nice. They don't tell you about these benefits in the hood. No. You gotta go to the recruit office to hear about it. They didn't go tell you all of them in the recruit office because there's a lot. They tell you about the medical and dental. But there's a lot. A lot. Their savings plan. Oh, <laughs> did I tell did I tell you about it? It'll keep you in shape? Pretty decent shape. You you good be in good health. You'll live in nice neighborhoods surrounded by people that are nice and safe. You'll never look at nothing danger. They'll teach you to fight. And I'm not saying you can't fight. But <laughs> they'll teach you how to kill somebody with your bare hands. They put it that way. There'll be nobody that'll be robbed from you ever again. They'll regret it, I guarantee you. <clears throat> I heard people <clears throat> that tried to visit family back in the hood. Some guy tried to rob them. Sometimes it wasn't successful. I'm not going to lie. A gun is going to beat a fist. Don't get me wrong. But some guy trying to approach you when you visit the hood, you'll be the hardest mother Jaeger out there. Whew. 
you trust me, you will. I've seen, I heard stories of people killing people. And, and you don't want to do that when you're in the military because they, people, you know, consider you a weapon now. You don't want to kill them, but you better break their arm. You can break all their bones, don't worry about that part. <laughs> and trust me, that's more fun because um, it's nothing better than setting an example of joining the military than having that military guy get approached by hood rat and you, they beat the shit out of the hood rat. I'm not saying go back to your hood all thugged out, some military thug, no, because you're better than that. What I'm saying if someone is trying to hate on you for bettering yourself because you joined the military, just let them know. Just let them know that you are a trained weapon and you will not hesitate to defend yourself. I'm going to hear, ladies and gentlemen, because I think I covered just about every benefit you could have during the military. Everything from being able to fight to the benefits to getting in, everything. And I kind of dragged this out a little bit. I just want to point out if there's anything I want you to take away from this is um, you could be in the worst case scenario in your life as a pookie or a drug, dope fiend, dope boy, whatever, have tattoos up the yin yang. But you can get in the military and get out of the hood. The whole process could take as quick as a month. Depending on what your MOS is, of course. You could be out the hood. If you are listening to this video now, you could be out of the hood before the, before the summertime. In fact, that's when most people like to recruit. Most recruiters have the recruiting plane coming around or the truck or wherever bus getting you to boot camp in the summer i think usually usually at the end of um the month so if you listen to this right now get your butt up go to recruit's office get yourself signed up and everything you should be able to be out of the hood by late may if not late may late june i guarantee it you'll be getting money you'll be covered you'll be wearing nice suits you'll be stronger faster, smarter. Then after four years you could get out, you won't have to return to the hood, you made it and you'll be successful. That's all I'm leaving for you now, for you now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. I'll try and keep posting videos in the future. And remember, those people are too weak to follow you. Leave them behind. Lead the pack. Be strong. Have a great day.